Kingsley, who is the team leader. We've got a full-time admin worker and three support workers. Uh, we also have a full complement of volunteers and facilitators um, working within our organisation. We do have a structure, an internal structure, of how we actually develop our volunteers. We have a lot of people who want to facilitate and quite often they've got a very different idea of where they'd like to be ultimately. I'm very glad to say that we do have a number of key workers that have been with us for some time who frankly without their contribution we wouldn't be able to operate the services that we do and I'd, I'd particularly like to, to make that very clear. As um, Kevin said, we operate six days a week, um, working into the evenings till eight o'clock. We do have quite a lot of clients that, uh, as Kevin said, do work and to be able to come along outside of normal business hours is quite a benefit. So that's something we're quite pleased to have developed. What we actually do when we receive a referral is, as soon as possible, we get a client in and conduct what we call a full assessment. And from that assessment, we can then prioritise what it is that we need to be doing right from the start. Quite often with some people, of course, they do arrive at a point of crisis and we do need to be addressing that. We need to look at that and actually keep people safe. What we do once we've conducted that assessment, it gives us an idea of exactly what we need to prioritise. And I should just mention that in the assessment um, protocol, which we've just recently rewritten, we have got um, sections within that now where we're looking particularly to pick up things like domestic violence, um, child protection issues. Um, we need to make sure that we've got clear consent, that if somebody comes in, we're not able to complete the full assessment, that we have enough information that we can actually do something about keeping that person safe if they're in crisis when they approach us again or some of the situation happens. So once we've conducted that, we've got a very clear picture then of exactly where it is that we want to be going or where the client wants to be going and we're very much led by that. So together we plan a way forward. We put together, I'll avoid the word, uh, the phrase rather, care plan. Uh, it's more of our aims and objectives, if you like. So we sit down with somebody, with a client, and actually determine where it is that they want to be, and we actually do bullet point that down in an aims and objectives plan. We then consider the relevant inclusive, uh, as Kevin was saying, it's not an external referral, it's part of the process here with NERA. We consider some of the other agencies which may be really beneficial towards addressing the client's overall aims and objectives. Some of those things can be obviously seeing a counsellor, say for example Sunderland Counselling Services or NECA. Perhaps uh, we might need to include medical intervention and therefore we'll be contacting uh, C4. Um, obviously the client's GP, all of those kind of things, we need to make sure that we're very clear on that. Once we've identified those things, um, we then aim to actually try and move the client forward at all times so that each session should actually be about something, even if it's a very small step forward, but it is something that's quite measurable and quite tangible. So that we're constantly reviewing and going back to the original objectives. Where are we on this? Where are we on that? How are things improving? And constantly looking at that so that there is a continual momentum. One of the other things that we'll be looking at is overcoming barriers. For example, if we've made a referral, um, say to NECA, and it turns out that the client isn't actually making appointments there, we would actually look at that, look at what needs to be changed, what is the barrier to actually engaging, perhaps this isn't the right time, maybe we need to be looking at that again. So it's a very big part of our support worker's role, is constantly looking at moving things forward. One of the main things that we do um, encounter, sadly, on quite a regular basis, is um, clients arriving in a state of crisis. Now because of what we do, and some of the other agencies that I see represented here today, it's probably quite commonplace that you'll all have had experience where people actually arrive only at a point of crisis. And therefore their ability to engage or their desire to engage is very much affected by that crisis. We consider it a very big part of our job to anticipate and reduce areas of crisis wherever possible. One of the things that links into that would be, say for example, our assessment process, which we've tried to keep as brief as possible, it is actually somebody sitting down in a room and somebody is going through some paperwork. Now of course it's very much about making that relationship with the person, however, for some people that is just too much. As an absolute minimum, we've put together what we call a keeping you safe form. So if somebody arrives in crisis, or they're just not able, they just want to talk in that session, they want to talk, as long as we've got that filled in, 
of keeping you safe for details, things like obviously name, address, who we can contact, who's your next of kin, what medication are you on, are there any medical conditions, all of the things that we need to know if the crisis were to escalate whilst that client is either within our uh, premises or we hear something externally. So we've at least got that as an absolute starting point. And that's something that we consider to be very important. However, the anticipation and reduction of crisis is also part of our ongoing work. So we look at when we're working with the client, if we're hearing things in the session, for example, um, that the landlord um, has sent me a letter and I'm having problems because I'm making too much noise. We need to anticipate that this is likely, if this doesn't get addressed, we're going to have this client perhaps turning up at 5 o'clock on a Friday homeless. So we need to be doing something with that information as we're hearing it to try and anticipate that crisis wherever possible and reduce. The other thing that I'm very conscious of is how we, it's not just about what we do and the paperwork that we have in place and the protocols. I think it's very important that we actually model well as an agency. I think sometimes it's very easy to get embroiled in the drama that sometimes, sadly, is a part and parcel of some of our clients' lives. I think as long as we can model calmness and a measured approach, that, I think, in itself, if a client remembers nothing of what's gone on within a session, that's what they'll know. They will know that in coming to NERA, this is a calm, professional environment. I will be heard. Something will happen. Something will progress they perhaps can learn from that, that maybe I can take something from this within my own life, and some of the crisis that they're constantly faced with is something that we can actually look at again because we're modelling effectively. I did have it all written down, and I've gone completely off script. So, anyway, right, looking at that, um, one of the main things, of course, I think we're all very conscious of is looking at outcomes, how we actually measure outcomes. It's very difficult to measure an outcome. The ideal situation, I suppose, really would be the client arrives with an alcohol issue, they engage in our services, they reduce or abstain alcohol, and then they go out the door. In an ideal world, that would be great. It's not the real world. It doesn't often happen. Sometimes it does, but it doesn't often happen. I think that the main thing I'm particularly focused on, or our team rather very focused on, is recognising everybody as an individual. Kevin alluded to this in, in his um, speech before me. Therefore, looking at everybody as an individual, I realise that we have targets to meet, we have paperwork we must fill in, and there are certain targets. We're being given money, and we must, of course, make sure that we're spending that effectively. But how we do that within a kind of a crisis situation, um, that's the challenge. I think the most important thing is that we do, as Kevin said, offer a bespoke tailored service, if you like. So we're actually able to look at the most prioritised needs, if you like, for that client and make sure that we're addressing those needs as they're important for the client. Alcohol may be the presenting issue. However, we recognise, of course, that to focus purely on the alcohol may not be enough. Although much of what we work with may be the negative fallout of problematic alcohol use, we must be mindful of the role that alcohol has played for the client and the very personal relationship that client has with alcohol. At the very least, I think we need to recognise that alcohol might be keeping something quite unpalatable at bay and that in addressing the alcohol issue, 